another uh, transducer uh, is known as the seismic transducer uh, is also known as absolute for example uh, we know that there are earthquakes and during which uh, uh, there is a motion of the earth itself on its surface now how do we measure because we are standing on the earth and there is no reference with which you can measure the motion of the earth so we will have to measure the motion of the earth without any reference similarly let's say you are going on a car and the car uh, goes up and down and you want to measure the movement of the car uh, vertical to the road axis again you can't because the, there is no reference point uh, the car is moving and you cannot do anything so the human ingenuity came up with a transducer that uh, measures uh, the displacement acceleration and uh, velocity uh, of uh, such uh, movements where it's really impossible to get a reference uh, that transducer is called the seismic transducer the transducer is very simple uh, we take a box and within the box we put a mass suspended with uh, a dashboard and a spring and uh, we measure the displacement of the uh, mass right uh, <clears throat> with respect to uh, a reference point in the frame that holds the mass now let's say there is an external force on this mass right then this force would try to move the mass inside so i can write m d square x naught by dt square plus d into dx by dt plus k into x equal to f force equal to mass into acceleration force equal to displacement into velocity and force equal to displacement into spring constant now if i apply laplace transform uh, then I get m s square into x naught of x uh, plus d s into x of s plus k into x of s equal to f of s or I can write x naught of s equal to this is s ffs divided by m s square plus t s plus k now we can use the conventional uh, way of representing this this is x naught of s equal to force i am talking at mass into acceleration of s this this mass is not the m this is the whole mass that has an acceleration divided by s square plus 2 alpha omega n s plus omega n and uh, the uh, to write like this i have to now divide this equation by m both numerator and denominator so i have ffs divided by m into uh, s square plus d by m into s plus k by m right and uh, I uh, now uh, take the uh, this is one uh, so now I uh, multiply 
by k this m I am going to take it there so I uh, this is divided by m and I multiply by k and divide by k now if I look at this equation with respect to this equation then I can write it as m uh, uh, omega n square uh, divided by k so if you do that then we know that omega n is equal to square root of uh, k by m and alpha is uh, square root of uh, d square by 4 m k <coughs> whatever it is this we have done several times in the uh, past in other this thing uh, this is a special second order now I can now say that the if I measure the movement of the mass with respect to its frame which is x naught I measure the acceleration of s with the multiplying constant m1 by k and a frequency modifying transfer function right so if I now look at the uh, x naught of s by a naught of s I will get a low pass function so there will be a omega cutoff this is omega this is uh, magnitude of uh, x naught of s all we have to do is sub substitute s is equal to j omega and I get this uh, function so I now can measure the acceleration by simply measuring the displacement of the mass the displacement of the mass is proportional to the acceleration of course a modifying function that function is the low pass filter characteristics so for frequencies less than omega c x naught directly measures a naught so we call this as mass spring accelerometer because depending upon how you i measure x naught whether I am going to use uh, an LVDT to measure x naught or uh, a potentiometer to measure x naught or a capacitance change in the x naught uh, or inductance change in the x naught we have different kinds of accelerometers in fact there is also an accelerometer that uh, uses another transaction principle uh, called the uh, piezo electric accelerometer uh, we will learn about it when we talk about piezo electric uh, transducer now this one where x naught of s is equal to a of s into m1 by k into omega n square by s square plus 2 alpha omega n s plus omega n square can further because I know a of s is d square x by dt square or this is d by dt of dx by dt or this is d by dt of velocity because dx by dt is velocity and if I now take Laplace transform this is s into velocity this is a so a of s is nothing but s into velocity of s into m1 by k into omega n square by s square plus 2 alpha omega n s plus omega n square right okay now it's suddenly gone to okay good so now we see that 
x naught of s please remember this is the same thing that we are measuring is uh, m1 by k into v of s into s square s into omega n square divided by s square plus 2 alpha omega n s plus omega n square of course this is a, a band pass function so if i now plot x naught of s versus uh, 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 v of s as omega increases i will get a characteristics like this of course uh, in the previous case uh, i can say this is alpha equal to 1 if alpha is less than 1 i will get this and alpha equal to greater than 1 i will get this that's a damping constant here again if alpha equal to less than 1 i'll get uh, steep characteristics if alpha is equal to 1 i will get this if alpha is greater than 1 i will get this so depending upon how i uh, design uh, my uh, mass spring and accelerator uh, my uh, dashboard values i can change the alpha to whatever value i want so now if i look at it between two frequencies uh, omega 1 and omega 2 the same mass spring accelerometer uh, the output displacement of the mass with respect to its own uh, frame measures the velocity so uh, the, the basic thing is it's the same transducer but i am looking at from a different angle if it is uh, less than the cutoff frequency uh, of the low pass filter characteristics then i can use it as an accelerometer if it is uh, if i put the damping constant much greater than one uh, between frequencies omega and omega 2 i uh, make it as a, a velocity transducer the thing the same thing we can uh, extend x naught of s equal to m1 by k into a of s a is i know d square x by dt square this is s square into x right if i apply laplace transform so i can write uh, x i input of s into s square by s square plus 2 alpha omega n s plus omega n square now this is high pass filter so if i look at the same characteristics uh, this is uh, x naught of s divided by xi of s i will get a characteristic something like this so after the cutoff frequency omega c the same mass spring accelerometer uh, can measure the input displacement so using one mass spring accelerometer we can measure acceleration we can measure uh, velocity and uh, we, may, we can measure displacement so these kind of accelerometers are uh, very much used for example if you want to measure what is the magnitude of earthquake you put the accelerometer uh, mounted on the earth and uh, you get the output and record and you process the output you get uh, the magnitude of earthquake in the on the what is known as the Richter scale so uh, these type of uh, accelerometers are uh, very very useful especially for example if you want to measure uh, the vibration in a car uh, vibration in a moving uh, uh, system this comes in very high uh, as I said, the mass spring accelerometer is the primary transducer, which translates hard to measure acceleration, velocity and displacement into a displacement of the mass with respect to its own frame, where it is housed in. And uh, we can use uh, different displacement measurement uh, uh, techniques. So if you have, if you put an LVDT in a mass spring accelerometer, you have an LVDT based accelerometer. If you put a potentiometer, uh, normally we don't use potentiometer because potentiometers are sluggish. But assuming that we put a potentiometer to measure 
uh, x naught uh, then we say it's a potentiometer based uh, accelerometer and if you use the two capacitances uh, the capacitance between the moving mass and the frame itself then we have a capacitance based accelerometer or we can also measure the movement of the mass using piezo resistance uh, which is very very popular in the micro electromechanical based accelerometer uh, setup uh, uh, in fact the uh, micro electromechanical uh, system accelerometer is exactly the same as mass spring accelerometer except for the fact that its size is very small maybe a few millimeter uh, in uh, any direction in the three dimensions and uh, uh, the, the one thing that we should understand is that the acceleration is a vector so you have motion in a particular direction and hence the velocity in a particular direction and hence the acceleration in a particular direction so if you do not know what the motion axis is then you will have to put uh, three accelerometers in the three axes x y and z and uh, you get what is known as a triaxial accelerometer so we, you get acceleration in the x axis acceleration in the y axis and acceleration in the z axis so you have uh, you, you can get such uh, this is x uh, y and z right so this is minus z minus x and minus y axle so you you can get uh, a triaxial accelerometer in one setup itself so the um, the uh, Usage is uh, quite phenomenal. Uh, for example, you have used your uh, uh, cell phone, and you know the moment you rotate your uh, cell phone, the image also rotates uh, either from landscape to portrait or portrait to landscape, and the rotational uh, direction of rotation, and as well as the velocity of rotation. Uh, is sensed by a triaxial accelerometer uh, which is a very very small size uh, kept within your uh, hardware of the uh, mobile phone so uh, the the uh, basic thing is an uh, accelerometer uh, is a primary sensor which simply converts the input acceleration into a displacement of a mounted mass the mass is mounted with a spring and a dash part you adjust the uh, m d and k constants such that uh, whatever frequency response you want on the accelerometer you get uh, that thank you